from uh, the today's news, what is making headline yeah. is in relation to uh, the switch between uh, President, uh, Deputy President William Ruto and Ray Odinga. And um, what they're saying here is that it seems that uh, uh, the Raila of yesterday, the Raila of yesterday is the truth of today. Simply, they're saying here that um, the way William Ruto is talking about vote rigging is whatever Raila Odinga used to say while he was in opposition. Do you see that switch as well? Yes, that switch is happening. And uh, I think uh, whoever is talking about it has a right to talk about it. Mm -hmm. we, in this country, we had, had uh, uh, this discussion around every time we are going into elections. Right. And I think the very best we can do for ourselves is to fix this problem once and for all. Right. And the best way to do it is to make sure that we continue building up on our uh, processes, mm -hmm. especially around the IEBC, mm -hmm. the electoral body. Right. Because people have to have confidence with the, the electoral body of today. If you remember, uh, around every election, we form an IEBC. We have the guys who are in, in, in place being moved out and a new team being put in. And this has not been very good for us as a country because mm -hmm. then the levels of confidence are always wanting. The, 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 the team that has come in, there's always the question of whether they really understand what is required of them and whether they have adequate time to prepare for the elections. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, a lot of time, this is a new team coming into place mm -hmm. and they, they are learning on the job. And politics in itself, it's very divisive. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and let me ask you this, as, as simple as such. These guys who are mentioning about uh, vote rigging, yes. do they know something that we do not know? Yes, I think they know something. They wouldn't be saying this if they didn't know uh, what, what goes on. So I think they have a right to, if they think there is rigging that is about to take place, I think the best they can do is to make sure that uh, we know. Mm -hmm. And I think the way the DP team put it while well, they were in US, they said there is rigging being planned. Mm -hmm. IBC has gone into action. They are going to investigate that. Mm -hmm. We will get that report out. Right. Once they find out, mm -hmm. they will let us know. They'll let us know. Yes. But then, the fact that they will let us know, Mr. Camp, here, yeah. I also view it from this kind of sense that um, if then we are headed into an election, like 152, if not 56 days, and people are already starting to mention about rigging, not rigging, IBC has come clear saying that those who are propelling this kind of idea that we are, uh, the, the votes will be rigged, they are wasting their own time and uh, the side of uh, uh, Ruto says that we see in some clear indications of rigging. Uh, we as Kenya, where does this leave us? Do, do we even have to now go and vote? I think the fact that there is a team saying another team is planning rigging, there is very little as, as, as voters we can do. We must vote. Mm -hmm. We must vote. The fact that the DP, teams, the, the DP team has raised that and IEBC is investigating, I think that's the best way to go. I think you realize in the last election, around this time or somewhere around this time, we were, we were there wondering whether the, whether the IBC of that time and will understand the procedures. Mm -hmm. At least we have an IBC that has conducted an election in the past. Right. The levels of confidence around this IBC is quite high compared to any other IBC. Mm -hmm. So I am confident this, these problems are going to be sorted. If there are indications that, that there is rigging that is being planned, I think that will be handled. Uh, as Kenyans, we are there and we are watching and we have a lot of uh, avenues to address it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's a, there's a big issue about that. I think that should be investigated and a report should be given. Right. Yes. And it should be satisfying the mm -hmm. report. Right. Uh, yes. Is there a cause for alarm? Mm, yes and no. Yes, because if anybody is planning rigging, that is not a very good report. Mm -hmm. That is very wrong because that, that threatens the stability of our country. Right. Um, and if it's a no, because we have time to fix 
Because this, this for me, still remains allegation. Somebody is alleging that another one is planning rigging. Mm -hmm. Investigation is being done. And if we find out, then whatever measures that require to be taken should be taken. All right. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Mr. Camp here mentioning about the switch as well as the vote rigging claims by Deputy President William Ruto. We'll continue to talk about that. But let me remind you as well that we'd love to hear from you now. There's that number below your screen. You can share your comments. Also on Facebook, we are found live. We are streaming this stuff live and you can find us as well and do comment on the comment section and we'll be sampling your view. Whether if you agree with Mr. Camp or not, if you have your divergent view on that, you can share that as well. But coming back to you, Mr. Camp. Uh, when the DP is speaking about vote rigging in the United States, and uh, people in the country here, particularly his opponents, are saying that uh, he's seeking solace from uh, the United Nations and uh, the international states as well. Do, do we have to get there? This is our stuff. Why should we go out and discuss about it? I think what he's trying to say is uh, he's telling the international community that uh, we could be derailing. This train could be derailing. There are indications that we are derailing. If that is not sorted out, the implications are far and wide if we don't sort out the rigging claims. So for me, it is not a problem whether he says it in the US or he says it around here. I don't think that is a problem. I think the problem should be whether we will fix the rigging issue if it is found to be there. Mm -hmm. And politics is full of statements. People make all kinds of statements. So it comes down to we need to fix it. We need to be sure nobody is going to rig this election. And mm -hmm. for your information, you remember this matter also came up right. before the DP spoke. Another member of parliament spoke mm -hmm. about it. So I think there's, 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 we should be ready to go into serious investigations, into this matter around rigging and whether a team is planning to rig. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm saying this is the, the person that made the other statement about rigging, about a month ago, or there about three weeks ago, that member of parliament belongs to the Azmio group. Mm -hmm. So, and now it is the Kenya Kwanzaa group alleging rigging. So, I think there is, there, there is concern. Right. This matter should be addressed. Mm -hmm. And like I've said, um, it should be addressed now. Right. Yes. Now. And if it's not now, now as well. And, yes. and, and um, what does the DP stands to gain with this kind of a discussion on a platform like for, the, for instance the one that he had in the United States? Like I've said, he chose to speak it from that forum. Mm -hmm. I've also said the rigging in this country, rigging an election right. has a far-reaching implication around our security, safety of the people, the economy, and many, many other things. I think for him to address it at that level, he expects also at the level of the international community to start mm -hmm. focusing on it. Mm -hmm. And like I've said also, uh, the fact that that matter, this is the second time this matter is rising. Mm -hmm. And the first time it, it came up, it came up through the Azimio group. A member of parliament from Azimio group mm -hmm. said that they were planning to rig an ele this election. So I think we need to wait for the investigation by ABC mm -hmm. so that we know really whether there is something that needs to, to be fixed or this is mere politics. It right. could be either. And, and, and this international community that you're talking about, yes. do they have much to do when it comes to stopping this kind of act from happening? Of course they have a voice. They will, they will put their foot down. They will require that things are done in a transparent manner. Everybody would want to form a government that is accepted far and wide. Mm -hmm. You don't want to form a government that, uh, for example, the UK would say we don't recognize that government because you guys did not win this election. So everybody would want to form a government that uh, or voted or seen to be voted by the Kenyan people without other issues being attached around it, like, mm -hmm. like they corruptly uh, you know, got elected mm -hmm. or they rigged the election. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the issues that... Uh, you, you want to be accepted across the board. And I think everybody is concerned with this. It's very unfortunate that it's coming up. And uh, at the end of the day, 
it is the IBC that should put matters straight for Kenyans and wow. say, yes, there were plans for, for rigging and we have sorted that one out, or these were just stories. Yeah, politics. Yes. Right. And, and also still staying with uh, Ruto's trip to the United States and also now that he is uh, in the United Kingdom, I want to get your sentiments in brief. Uh, do you think we, th this trip has brought more good than harm or what? To our politics? Politics is about people expressing what is in their minds. It's about people saying what they think the society is about. It's about current affairs, about what is happening every day. So probably he has his agenda going to the US and mm -hmm. the UK. Like I understand, part of it is to, to, to reach out to the, to the voters out there. That's what I want. Um, the other thing would be to convince the big guys in the West that is capable that is, is ready to form government, that it should be taken seriously, that its policies should be considered. These are the issues. And it's been done by every uh, presidential candidate. I understand you will be addressing the Chatham House. And it's a, it's, it's a place every uh, presidential candidate would want to go and speak about their policies when, when they form government what would be expected of them, and the right. challenges they see mm. ahead, and also to seek partnerships. Right. So this is, I think is, is doing what we're probably going to see the Azimio leaders do in another one or two weeks. Right. So, yeah. V very well. And uh, out from this um, trip, we've seen him held a series of meetings, meeting Kenyans in diaspora, meeting the voters, meeting uh, policy makers in, uh, in the United States. And out from all these meetings, he has spoken about a lot, including some of his policies, um, like that of the bottom up. And um, the fact that, yes, maybe to some extent, they are sellable here in Kenya. Do you feel also in the United States, for instance, to the diaspora voters, it's also sellable? Or do you think, how is it going to be? I think he's explaining his policy and what he's going to do and the focus of the economic uh, uh, focus mm -hmm. for his government if he forms the 2022 government. In that respect, I think um, he's explaining himself to people he intends to have them vote for him. That is one. Two, the bottom-up uh, approach, economic approach, has been debated around the world. The U.S. Mm -hmm. has spoken about it. Mm -hmm. They've spoken about the bottom-up. And in essence, what they are saying is uh, they are saying you, you empower the, the, the very the, the lowest group right. and give them the ability to, to do business and to, to, to grow the economy mm -hmm. from the bottom. Right. It's still being debatable. Uh, this is what he has decided is going to be his policy. Uh, the challenge with the bottom up is that we, are, we do not have an example of a place or a country that it has been practiced. Mm -hmm. But that is not to say, since it's a new thing, it's not going to work. Is it practical? Let's start from there. Personally, I think it's very practical. It's very, very practical. Mm -hmm. I, I, I strongly believe it's very practical. Because what happens to the, the guy down there, the Mama Boga? Are we, are we saying that the Maboga has no right for the government to plan for them, for the government to put money where they are? And if that was the case, uh, then what do we mean when we talked about the Women Fund, the Youth Fund? I believe it is part of the bottom-up approach. What the DP has done with this, with this approach is that it's put everything around the bottom up mm -hmm. yes but i think what we were doing with the youth fund the women fund and all these other funds were about going to the woman and giving her the, the ability to do business to borrow money go do business and return that money the same thing we're doing with the youth right. so it's the same thing it's it's very practical we need to be cautious as we go there and i'm, I'm very sure whoever is doing this the the, the guy is working on this mm -hmm. understand it and right. the DP has talked about putting 100 billion, 100 right, billion right, right. across the country 
that have people borrow money and um, do business and return that money. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is good. We, 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 need to, we need to welcome that. Right. Yes. Very well. And, and, and last but not least, on um, the DP Ruto's uh, uh, trip, um, on top there we are also told uh, that um, Raila Odinga is also set to be visiting the United Kingdom in the next uh, couple of days once Ruto returns. Why the interest of the United Kingdom? Why do you think so? I think he has added to the Chatham House. He's added to the big guys mm -hmm. to speak about his policies. Uh, is going to talk about... Is it necessarily important for every contestant to go there? Not necessarily, but it's, it's a good avenue for you to speak. It's a good place to speak about your policy to the international community, to the guys who, who are listening, who are interested to invest around the world, to consider your country, to consider your government as they plan the investment plan. So this is, this is very important. Because, you see, they may not understand everything. The, the changing uh, economic uh, situation in, the, in, in this country. Like the, the, the COVID-19 situation has changed this country, has changed the economic right. uh, situation in the country. Yes, yeah. Right. And they also said that there was a debate about who is coping who or who is trying to do what the other is doing. Mm, I would say myself that uh, nobody is coping who. Nobody. If Raila goes to... If the railway goes to UK, he's not copying William Ruto. We know where he's going. Mm -hmm. And what he's going to do is important. So he's not copying William Ruto. And I don't think Raila has any reason to copy William Ruto. Mm -hmm. I think Raila is a man of his own. He's gone there before. <laughs> he's spoken to that team before. Right. He's been into UK. So he's not copying anybody. Right. He wouldn't be the one copying William Ruto. Very well. Yes. Now, I want us to shift gears from uh, whatever is happening from the United States and the UK. We'll leave it at that. And we'll also make sure that we look into how things are going to happen today as well. We are told that uh, the Deputy President William Ruto is still going to address a number of meetings in the United Kingdom before he's headed to Dubai. But coming back into the country here, there's something else that is happening, Mr. Kam. Yes. Uh, within the One Kenya Alliance. Yes. And um, yes, there are sources within the One Kenya Alliance that uh, we saw saying there is that MOU that have already, they have already drafted it, even though uh, the NAC Kenya a little bit moved aside, saying they needed more time to look into it. But it's clear that One Kenya Alliance seems to be, you know, shaky and to some extent also is trying to uh, craft itself and it's headed into the ballot as One Kenya Alliance. What do you make of that? I think they need to put their house in order and fairly quickly. They risk losing confidence. Fairly quickly? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because Kenyans could easily lose confidence in them. From the beginning, they have never looked like a serious group. They look like they are, they are trying things out. Mm -hmm. You remember last week, on Monday, the story was they are not going to sign the agreement with mm -hmm. Azimio because Moses Kuria is joining them. Right. And Moses Kuria does not believe in Azimio. Moses Kuria has since moved to UDA. Mm -hmm. So we were expecting now that Moses Kuria has moved his interest to UDA, that they'll go back and sign the Azimio agreement. Mm -hmm. They seem to have an internal agreement that uh, they are doing. And from their speech, they look like they, they have so much to be done. They are right. already talking on uh, uh, having joint candidates right, or right. where candidates, where there are challenges, they will decide how it's going to be done. My point on this is that it's a tricky route they are taking, where they want to discuss whether in this place we'll have a joint candidate and whether on that other place we'll have, we'll have everybody mm -hmm. you know, contesting, their party contesting. It's doable, but it's very challenging. In 2013, this was a major challenge that TNA and URP faced, mm -hmm. where they, they really tried to have joint candidates and have joint nominations in constituencies and in counties. It did not work. It was messy. Right. Um, it, it's something they wouldn't want to go back to. Because what happens is uh, a, a TNA candidate would say, you know, I'm strong here. Mm -hmm. A URP candidate would say, I'm strong. And if I'm not contesting here, if you guys go for a joint nomination, for a joint uh, nomination, I'm not going to participate. 
you know, I will jump to another party and support the other candidate. You know, it's really messy. Mm -hmm. They may have to go that route, but they really need to prepare for what they are going into. And right. even before going there, they need to agree on a lot of other things. For example, are they really together? Are these guys really together? Mm -hmm. have, have, they, have they really made their mind to work as Oka? That is the first question. Right. Second question, mm -hmm. are they going to the ballot? Do they have a candidate who is going to the ballot as a presidential candidate? Or are they going to sign an agreement with Azimio? Right. So, in, 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 looking at um, that uh, MOU, yes. I, I think out from um, the many points they listed, yes. I think what caught me so keenly were the three points. That yes. is one having uh, a presidential candidate, yes. of which they said that in the near future they will have to say who he is or she, who is she. Mm. But that uh, we be, let's begin from uh, the presidential candidate first, Mr. Yeah. Camp there. Yes. yes. Do you see this uh, thing coming out so... Is it likely that we are going to see it coming out or it's just about uh, a mere say? Are they likely to have their own presidential candidate, one Kenya Alliance? No. They don't even look like they, they want to have a presidential candidate. Because they're already talking about signing an agreement with us. Mm -hmm. they, they've not ruled it out. Even last week when they appeared to, they were just saying, you see, we, are, we want to talk to Moses Kut. And it was not clear whether they will not sign. I think these guys are eventually going to sign the agreement. The question is whether they will have a fallout once that agreement has been signed. Mm -hmm. um, do they have a problem with, with, do the other candidates have a problem? Because at least we know the presidential candidate there would be Kalonzo Musioka. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in that event, uh, if he joins as Neo, is somebody within as Neo uh, not interested, somebody within Oka not interested with them joining as Neo, mm -hmm. or is somebody within Oka pushing them to join as Neo, and they are not they are not happy with joining as Neo. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they need to address that first. Whether they will go to they will they will go to the ballot as Oka, right. or they will join as Neo. Yes. Right. And, and, and uh, do you feel, Mr. Camp, that uh, the One Kenya Alliance, looking yes. at what? Uh, they are speaking the principles and how you know you've mentioned about how they need to you know uh, try and uh, stabilize themselves do you think one kenya alliance is running away from the reality that it's so very hard to have uh, a third uh, horse in this race yes i think i think uh, that is the point i think the point is that running away from the reality that they can they are not able to present a presidential candidate of mm -hmm. any credibility mm -hmm. And I think that's to be fair to them. They, 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 they have difficulties to come to terms that they cannot, in the current political scenario, mm -hmm. the current political situation in the country, they are, they are not able to, they are not going to present a presidential candidate. And if they did, they are not going to fare anywhere close. Right. So I think the best is for them first to agree, are we going to, are they going to, go to the ballot. What options do they have? They only have one option, to join as Neo. I think they have a problem with what, what, what role they are going to play in as Neo, mm -hmm. who they are going to become. Right. Is Kalonzo Musioka going to become deputy to Raila Odinga? <laughs> or around that. I think that would be, uh, probably the that other is one worry. is what is the other, the role of the mm -hmm. others, yes. Of Jirongo, the role of Jirongo within Azimio, the role of uh, Gideon Moy within Azimio. Right. Yeah, probably. Those now, are if, some of if the let's say today, Mr. Camp, we, do, we wake up and um, they say we are joining Azimio, yes. how do you think it's going to be within the Azimio together with the One Kenya Lands? Is it going to be easier to divide those kind of positions? It's going to be very hard. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be very hard. I think what you are seeing is, is, is the reality of them if they were to join Azimio, how the situation would be. Let me give you an example. Right. Within Azimio, the presidential candidate is Raila Odinga. That's sure bet. Sure bet. Mm -hmm. I think we, we, you can turn it around. It's still going to be Raila Odinga presidential candidate for Azimio. Mm -hmm. um, but then, so Kalonzo Musoka would be deputy to Raila, mm -hmm. the running mate. But what becomes of Central? What becomes of that big chunk of voters right, right. 
uh, what, what happens to them? Do, then what do they get? So I think that's where the issue is. And uh, from, from the way I'm seeing it, uh, Central Kenya could be positioning themselves to get the deputy president right. to Raila. And probably then Kalonzo would have to wait. Right. If that is the situation, mm -hmm. then that could explain <laughs> where we, why we are where we are. Right. Yes. And, and just recently, when uh, the Azimio Lomoja was in, in uh, Gusi region, yes. Yes. Uh, there are a number of leaders who spoke in relation to that, and they were telling of Kalonzo Musioka that, please, you, the fact that you're coming in so late, you should wait for us to place you where you think we think we can place you, not you telling us you want this and this. Do you think that is right? No, that is not right. Uh, Kalonzo Musioka has a fair number of votes, quite a number of votes. And um, I think he has a right to speak and he has a right to negotiate, which he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I think he's doing a good job by negotiating being tough, being whoever he is now. But do you think he is late joining Azimio? No, he's not late, because they also realize that they need him within Azimio. Mm -hmm. um, I think what he's doing is, is okay. He's negotiating. He, he wants to, he's saying, this is what I have, and I, I, I deserve a better place. But I think they have different ideas. I think what you had in Goosey land is probably what what Azimio is mm -hmm. and what Azimio thinks about Oka and Kalonso Musioka. <laughs> I think they think that he's coming late in the day, right. he should be placed somewhere, mm -hmm. and I think Kalonso does not think that. Right. He thinks differently. Peter Kenneth also had to mention about that as well. Uh, because he's one of the contest uh, contenders for right. the deputy president for, right. for Raila Odinga. <laughs> and so if you don't expect him to welcome, right. he's likely competitor for that position. Definitely. Yes. We are taking a short break here. When we come back, we'll be discussing about the inanimate issue. It's quite very tough. It's quite, you know, uh, everyone seems to be very keen at choosing who is going to pick for the running mate. Yes. Is it a factor to consider for the winning? Big, big factor. Right. Come. You were just mentioning to me that um, it's quite a factor, a key one for that matter. Yes. For anyone who is contesting to become president. How key is it? It's very important. I think you just need to look in the past. Uh, you need to look at 2013, 2017. Mm-hmm. The running mate, the, the, the impact of the running mate. Look at uh, uh, 2013, the Jubilee side at that mm -hmm. time uh, of William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta. Look at the strengths of the two candidates. Look at the combination of Raul, Raila Odinga and uh, Kalonzo Musioka for the two 2013, both 2013 and 20, 2017. Look at 2007 when Kalonzo went to the went all the way to the ballot mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Raila Odinga went against Mike Kibaki and the implication of having Kalonzo go all through mm -hmm. and the difference it brought uh, so the, the running mate is going to be very important it's a in fact it's a game changer right. uh, from where we are today to mm -hmm. once these running mates are, are announced uh, we, we are going to you, you're going to see a real reorganization of our politics very true yes now we will discuss about each of the camps and who exactly is likely to become the running event but before then uh, is it necessary as of now to have running mates from the Mount Kenya region for each side yes Mount Kenya is going to be like the determining factor of the of the 2022 general mm -hmm. election and the reason is they are not producing a presidential candidate. Right. So, of course, in they, they have this many votes, 4.5 million and above. Mm -hmm. So, every candidate is going to think about what they are going to do to get those votes. Mm -hmm. So, William Ruto is thinking what should happen there, and Braila Odinga is thinking what should happen there. And right. in the event that Carlos Musioka is going to contest, is going to go to the ballot, then he must also be thinking what is going to what is going to happen right yes <laughs> i just love how you put it but then let's start now from the azimio side before we come to kenya kwanza right yes we have so many uh, names that have been prompted to become deputy to raila yes 
I don't know, uh, whom do you think is uh, at uh, a better position to become Riders Nut running it? Let's start from uh, picking each and uh, looking at uh, how they can even be uh, nominated to become running mates. Of course, there are, there are many. Raila is a big, uh, a big number to choose from. Mm -hmm. Raila can pick Mata Karua. Mata Karua is from Oka. Is Oka. she willing to become one? I think it's a different debate. Once she speaks, then uh, we are likely to see changes. If she speaks to be the running mate, and I think she said, in one of those debates, she said, if she speaks, then that's a very different thing. As long as whoever picks her, she has her ideologies. Mm -hmm. So, and I think what she meant is she's going to concentrate on her gubernatorial uh, campaigns. Right. Right. But if that opportunity was to rise, uh, then she will consider it. You remember when she said, uh, you don't campaign to be deputy. Mm -hmm. You are picked. So she's campaigning to be the governor mm -hmm. of Kirinyaga. But in the event she speaks, then she will concentrate. So for, right. for me, that is a big one, mm -hmm. Mata Karua. Okay. A pick for, William, for Raila Odinga. The second pick for Raila Odinga would be Peter Munya. Mm -hmm. Peter Munya, I think, is already... Um, there are a lot of supporters around him. He's another pick for... For, for, running. for running mate. Mm -hmm. Now, probably what I need to say about um, Mata Karua before I go to Peter Munya is that Mata Karua is already associating herself with, with Oka. Mm -hmm. she's, uh, she has already said she's going, to, she's going for the governor of Kirinyaga. Right. She's putting a, a lot of her weight around that. Mm -hmm. And you remember that she had some differences with BBI. She did not agree with a lot of what right, was right, in right, BBI right, right, and right. the way it was done. Mm -hmm. So there was uh, there's likelihood that if um, if there's a team pushing for her, then they could also be finding it a little bit hard from the fact that she is she does not entirely agree with mm -hmm. what yeah. Azimio stands for. stands for. But she's a big pick mm -hmm. for deputy to Raila Odinga. Right. Then Peter Munya, I think you've seen the reorganization of politics around Meru, Embu, mm -hmm. and Tarakanithi. I think that region is like drifting towards UDA. Mm -hmm. And so if you are picking a running mate, you also want to think about what they are going to, to, to bring. On board. You remember the, 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 the running mate of Mudavadi mm -hmm. and what became of his <laughs> running mate. Right. They even said he did not they are not sure whether they voted for him. So the, if, if that region is gravitating around UDA, then that may not favor Peter Munya for, for, for do, deputy. Do, do you think, uh, let me cut you short here. Yes. Do you think if they pick Peter Munya, yes. and uh, the fact that uh, the ground is drifting, uh, it's, it's, it's leaning on the side of the UDA, yes. do you think by the picking of uh, Peter Munya, then uh, people can see, okay, Maybe here we have a space we can shift now, come to Azimio. Mm, I think it can go either way. It can go either way. It can go, they may say now we have our own, number two, so why should we vote elsewhere when we are very close now to power? That can be it. But the other one is the conviction, uh, the political conviction. I think that region is drifting towards UDA. You've right, seen right, right. Uh, Mitomi Juki mm -hmm. is now joined UDA, right. the governor of, uh, uh, of um, Tarakaniti. Tarakaniti. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen uh, the senator of Tarakaniti is mm -hmm. moving towards national politics. Right, I think right. they are creating space for whoever is going to be governor and for them they don't want, uh, they don't want it to be contested. They mm -hmm. want to agree on who is going to be the governor and so that region, uh, if they realize that mm -hmm. they are not going to get as much votes, then they may not pick him. The other factor around Peter Munya would be, does he really come from central Kenya? Mm -hmm. does he, what, what would you say Peter Munya comes from? Because you know, that region has always complained that they vote with their fellow uh, uh, people from central, but once they go to power, they, like, they are kept aside. I think you know that... Uh, that is what ended, right, right. Ha had them form the party, the mm -hmm. bus party. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's more challenge. Kiraito Murungi is there. 
is not very sure where he's headed. He's mm -hmm. not telling us where he's headed. <laughs> and I think he's waiting to it, see. It's hard to tell. Yeah. It's hard to tell. Right. So those are the challenges around Peter Munya. Whether he's, if he's picked, whether they will vote with him mm -hmm. or they, that region has already made up their mind to vote with UDA. Right. Yes. And, and, and also, <clears throat> and, uh, looking at the Laikipia governor himself, who is leading the campaigns for Aila, what do you think of him? He's, he's Derito Moriti. He's a, he's a big, he's also a big name now within uh, the politics of Azimio. He could end up being the one to be picked. He has equal chances of getting picked. Right. I think uh, for, for a while he's uh, shown that he's capable. He could be considered for that position. He could be picked for deputy to Raila Odinga. And, and let me ask this question. Do you feel Raila Odinga is the one who is supposed to pick his deputy or uh, leaders from Mount Kenya region are the ones who are supposed to pick for him the, the running mate? I, I think it is vice versa. It's, it is the leaders. You see this, this um, first the, the Azimio. Azimio is, um, while it is associated with Raila Odinga, but I see it uh, more as a coalition of Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the side of Raila Odinga, the ODM side, is producing the president. Mm. So in this case, we are assuming the deputy president is being produced by the Azimio side that is headed by Uhuru Kenyatta, right. which is the <laughs> Jubilee side. So it is them, it is Uhuru Kenyatta and company who are going to say, we have settled on so and so mm. to become the running mate of Raila Odinga. Right. So it's really not Raila Odinga. And it could be explaining why... It could be explaining why Kalonzo said in the, in the NDC for the Jubilee NDC mm -hmm. that it is Uhuru Kenyatta who should be heading these negotiations. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as it is, is a major stakeholder within Azimio. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are those who say that Azimio is a Uhuru Kenyatta project. Mm -hmm. It's a Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, it's a Uhuru Kenyatta party. Right. Yeah. And that's why they're putting in as Raila as a project or what? Exactly. And those, those who say that are in the know, they understand what they're saying. I think, and this is my opinion, Azimio is less of Raila, it's more of Uru Kenyatta. Right. And even the way the formation is taking shape. So it is, it is Uru Kenyatta and Jubilee who are going to decide who is going to become the deputy. Whether Central Kenya will produce a deputy or the deputy is going to be Kalonso Musioka, I think it is in the interest of of uh, central Kenya. Right. Of yes. course, you've given me uh, a list of names as we finish with the Azimio. Yes. Uh, you've mentioned here about uh, the Laikipia governor, Diritu Muraithi. Yes. You've mentioned about uh, Kenya leader, Mata Karua. You've yes. mentioned about Peter Munya. Yes. Uh, there is Peter Kenneth himself. Peter Kenneth is another name. Mm -hmm. Peter Kenneth uh, could be more strategic than all the rest. Mm -hmm. By, I think he's the only one I see as having... People say he doesn't have ground. It could be a strategy. It could be a strategy. It's, it could be a strategy to look weak. It, it could be a strategy to appear to look weak and so uh, not be able to challenge the status quo once the formation takes shape. And this is what I mean. Look, whoever is going to become the deputy of Raila Odinga, like we have agreed, right. is going to be decided by uh, Central Kenya. Mm. And the fact is, whether he's going to come from Central Kenya or he's going to be Kalonso Musioka, I think it is going to be decided by the Central Kenya leaders, headed by Uru Kenyatta. Right. So Peter Munya may, Peter Munya may be, not, not really Peter Munya, but Peter Kenneth, may be there positioning himself, looking less ambitious, so that he does not appear to challenge whichever forces he, who are going to elect him. Because you know, whoever is going to take that position, right. especially from Central Kenya, will be the successor to Uhuru Kenyatta. So I think other interested parties around Uhuru Kenyatta are concerned who the next leader of Central Kenya is going to be. So by appearing the way he is, uh, less ambitious, uh, you know, he's saying very little, mm -hmm. that could be a strategy. So that finally he becomes the successor of Uhuru Kenyatta is right. Kenya. But also the, that strategy can even come to haunt him in the future. No, this is politics. Yeah, this is politics can go either way, but uh, because this, if, if you appear to be too ambitious to these people, they're already thinking, once you become the leader of Central Kenya, 
what becomes of them. Right. So it could be a strategy that is using. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very well. And uh, last but not least on Nazimio, I had a question in mind. I don't know how it's uh, escaping from me. Mm -hmm. But as we finish on the, the Azimio side, yeah, I'll remind, I'll remember, I'll remember it. Mm -hmm. Where does this leave the Western region? Looking at how it seems that uh, the Iranian metal will be picked from uh, the side of uh, the Mount Kenya region. And also Raila Odinga needs some votes from the Western region. I think uh, Raila Odinga is seen to represent both Nyanza and, and Western. Okay. And those people who have joined Raila Odinga, they have joined Azmio, have joined through Raila Odinga. Like, like I had said, the Azimio has two sides. As the ODM side, which is headed by Raila Odinga, and as Jubilee side, headed by Uhuru Kenyatta. That is how it is. Mm -hmm. Raila Odinga being the president, the presidential candidate, uh, definitely the running mate is going to come from the Jubilee side. Right. And I've said, not necessarily Jubilee side, that can also be Kalonso Musioka right. coming through coming through so, uh, so, Jubilee. So in a nutshell, you're telling me Western region is covered and received within the ODM party. Exactly. And you see they also formed the, 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 the party headed by Wamunyenye. Mm -hmm. That party which is, that belongs to Eugene Wamalwa. Um, it can be either way. Eugene Wamalwa could be allied to Uhuru Kenyatta, could be allied to uh, Raila Odinga, but I think they are covered. Mm -hmm. They are covered. The question is whether whether that position, that strategy is going to favor them, whether it's going to favor Azimio uh, by appearing to neglect Western region. Right. Yes. Very well. Now let's come to the Kenya Kwanzaa, headed by Deputy President William Ruto. And also there we have quite a number of names being frontiered to be the running mate. And um, among the many names that have been listed, we have uh, the Rigadi, uh, Rigadi Gashagwa, that is um, the member of parliament. We also have Anwai Guru inside. There's quite a number of them. If I get your sentiments about uh, just internalizing some of uh, the names given out there, whom do you think uh, is better fit to become Ruto's deputy? Is Mudavadi even on the list? The first choice for me would be Mudavadi. I wouldn't want to agree with the naysayers. He could be the running mate for, for William Ruto. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, I think uh, the Azimio team is tightly tied to central Kenya. So, Ruto can go to, for Modavad to be his running mate. And for me, he fits him very well. He presents a different side of William Ruto. Will he pull numbers? Yes, definitely. Modavad is going to pull numbers. Modavad is, is the person that will, if they are your running mate, they are going to pull numbers. He brings stability to the party. Mm -hmm. He brings so much to that party. He brings experience. He brings economic um, expertise. He brings a lot. When he was with Raila Odinga, when Raila Odinga won in 2007, mm -hmm. it was contested. So, uh, it was, Mudavadi was the running mate. So, Mudavadi can pull, they can pull people. Mm -hmm. He may not pull if he's the presidential candidate, but when he's the running mate, he, he can do that. Right. So I, he's the number one. For me, the number two, the, the second person who would do that is uh, Alice Waume. What do you mean? I haven't heard him, uh, I haven't heard the name anywhere. At least I'm saying it now. I only know for Anwar Guru. Yes, but I'm telling Alice <laughs> Waume. Okay, Kandara member of parliament. Yes, Kandara. Uh -huh. um, She's also, in my opinion, I see her as a, a person who could uh, bring stability within UTA. Mm -hmm. And among many other things... Does she have a voice in Mount Kenya? She's, develop, she's developing a voice. She is developing a voice. You know, Mount Kenya is one region where nearly anybody can become running mate. They mm -hmm. only need to agree on th that person. You can even see why we are... I mean, that's the reason why we have so many people. We are listing like five people who could become Raila's deputy. Mm -hmm. why, why are we listing all those people? It's because the chances of any one of them becoming deputy right. is, quite, is quite high. Mm -hmm. So it's the same. It's the same with the other side picking Alice Mahomi. Right. You, you, she can be, uh, be Ruto's. Now, let, let, me, let me ask you a simple question. And yes. I think it's quite, uh, you know, 
uh, of contest. And uh, if if Raila picks Martha Karua, yes, and Ruto picks Ali Zuhome, yes, which side do you be, feel carries the weight in Mount Kenya? Mm. It is Martha Karua and okay. Raila Odinga. We'll carry the weight. Yes, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Not to say that uh, Alice Wahome won't. She will, but not as much as Martha Karua. But given time, Alice, Ma Wa Alice Wahome is the, is the resemblance of Martha Karua. Only that she's now getting into politics. Wow. People, I think when you watch those who understand uh, Martha Karua very well, know that she stands for something. She will fight for what she believes. Right. And w what the Central Kenya people may be looking out for is that they may be looking out for a person that can s s fight for them in the event it is Raila Odinga, you know, against, going against what they've agreed with, what he has agreed with Central Kenya. They would mm -hmm. want somebody who can say, this is what we agreed, this is the right for Central Kenya, this is what Central Kenya should get. Mm -hmm. So that, that part of Martha Karua, is very attractive to not only central kenya right. to, to kenyans uh, in like general it. somebody who can mm -hmm. like demand what you agreed with them on an issue right. somebody you won't easily sway somebody mm -hmm. can speak their mind right yes. and uh, uh, staying still on uh, kenya kwanza I, I, i'm interested to know mr camp why 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 have you frontiered uh, alice wahome compared to anway good because alice wahome is mother karua type I've just said it's only that Alice Wahome has gotten a voice within, with, within UDA. But give her time. She's the person who will say what she believes. She's the, among the first people within Jubilee who told Uhuru Kenyatta off and said you're taking a wrong direction. What you're doing is wrong. You should not be seen to divide this country. You should not be seen to belong to a community while you're the president of the country. Right. I've watched her. Does that over make a anyone a, a, a potential running mate? Yes, because you see, what people are looking for a running mate is people who can speak for us. People are saying, Central Kenya would say, if if we pick this person, mm -hmm. would they be able to speak on our behalf when the cake is being shared? Would they be able to say, you see, no, I do not agree with this because of this and this, and I stand for this? Mm -hmm. Or would that person be a person who can be? an easy pushover. Because if you, if you get a person who can be pushed, you, you, you understand within, <laughs> within Azimio and ODM in right, particular, right, right, right. You, you, it, it is really hawkish. It's mm. really tough in there. So you really need to get somebody who can speak for the community and who can stand there and say, this is what we agreed and I'm taking nothing less than mm. this. And th that character is not with, it's not with uh, uh, Waiguru. Right. That character is not with the Waiguru. Mm -hmm. That character is with Alice Wahome and Mother Karuma. Right. Mr. Kamp, time, time is not on our side. Yes. And um, I, I think I need to ask this last question on uh, uh, matters about the running mate. And uh, I think uh, on uh, the governorship, we'll have to look at it next week if possible. Yes. On this last question, <clears throat> is it necessary mm -hmm. for the presidential candidates to pick female running mates? Not really, not really. It's not. It's not a must. It is. Uh, it's. In fact, it's less likely for them to pick. But you see, our 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 ladies have come of age in matters politics, and they they can speak their mind. Mm. They are equal to men. They are equal to men. They are equal to the task. The 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 environment has not been favoring them. Right. But those who have gotten the opportunity to speak, I think they've been able to, to, to convince us. And the reason I'm saying that, that is that, look at Martha Karua. Mm -hmm. As early as Kano days, she was able to stamp on her authority, regardless of what anybody said. And she stood for what she believed. This is the moment Kenyans are realizing she can be the head of state. She wow. can be somebody's deputy. Mm -hmm. She can represent the interests of people. Right. And like I have said, but, uh, Alice Wahome, on the side of UDA, she's equally tough. Mm -hmm. And time will, time will tell. Time will tell. Yes. Definitely. Thank you so much, sir, for coming through. Mm -hmm. um, we do love to continue this kind of conversation, but time is um, a little bit bad. Yes. And uh, we hope to have it another day, probably next week. Yes. If you don't mind. But thank you so much.